Welcome to the continuation of the Viper DIS radio system tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over a few of the more advanced features of audio settings, input settings, as well as I'll show you how to run more than one Viper on the same computer while retaining its independent settings. All right, once again, to get to this contact sensitive menu, I simply right clicked on the Viper anywhere and I'm going to go right to audio settings. In the audio settings dialog, we have uh, the ability to enable or disable the speakers and microphones. You may see a blank speaker device or microphone device as shown here. This simply indicates that it's using the default. You can see it's still working. It's just using the default device and uh, sound cards drivers usually have some sort of default device that, uh, that will be used when no, nothing else is specified. In this case, I also have headsets, so I'm going to put speakers for my headset I'm sorry headset for my speakers and uh, headset for my microphone device as well the additional settings we have here involve the outgoing audio encoding so for example the most common is the 8-bit new law but you can also use 16-bit or you can do custom where you set the sample rate bit depth etc independently once again, that only affects the outgoing audio. Whatever format the incoming audio uh, comes in at will be detected by Viper and uh, rendered accordingly. Okay, so that was the audio settings. So let me go to the input settings. And in the input settings, of course, I already have a joystick hooked up. So I'll just go ahead and select my joystick and I can map the buttons of the joystick to certain actions uh, on the Viper radio. So in this case I'll select the action um, I'll, uh, I'll make it act more like a uh, aircraft type uh, VHF radio and so once I've chosen a selection uh, an action rather I can click the set button and now I'll click the joystick button to actually perform the mapping. And you can see it shows you the device, the action, and just an input ID uh, shown here. Um, I will also add another action here. I will increment the first standby channel. And let's also decrement the first standby channel. There you go. All right, so these should work right now. And so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to change the active channel to the first one. And I'll be able to swap which channel is active by using the joystick button, clicking it. And I can also increment the inactive channel's frequency. All right or decrement the inactive channel's frequency. And of course you can do the more standard thing like transmit on a channel through a different button. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So now when I click the button I transmit on the second channel, channel 2. Uh, it's the exact same feature as if I did a push to talk button. Push to talk. Well turn off Fox. There we go. Push to talk on that particular channel only uh, sending out a frequency 124.9. In addition we can also change the number of channels and show you how this works if I increment the channels to say 4. A oh, one note on this uh, by default it sets a limit of 10 but if you go into the documentation, it'll show you how to get up to as much as uh, 100 channels. All right, so I've added some additional channels. And what I can do is I can go back to the input settings and select the device. And by the way, it works just as well if you use a mouse or keyboard. Mouse is not really recommended um, because you use it for so many other things. but uh, it will work on any of those types of inputs. Now you'll notice that I can also select um, channel 4 or channel 3 which didn't exist before 
and there's another button right there. So now if I want to talk on channel 3, transmit, oh, it's a, it won't transmit one note, it will not transmit while scanning, so you have to stop the scanning. Now I'm selecting button 0, and it's transmitting on uh, channel 3. Channels are simply numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. All right, so one other thing, let's go ahead and save this configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'll go here, I'll select Save, and let's call this Viper 1. So to save this uh, uh, Viper 1 configuration, I can also just close it and say I have unsaved changes. And when I bring back the Viper radio, it will bring me back Viper 1 because that's the last um, configuration that I had loaded. I could also go and open and select a particular configuration if I wanted. If I want to run two Vipers at the same time, I can just select, this is just another uh, shortcut made to the Viper executable. And there's some information in the help on how to set that up. And in this one, I can go in here and I can set audio settings. And I can set them to be regular speakers, for example, and desktop microphone. And if I had another joystick or input device, I could map those settings to this particular Viper as well. So if you have two Vipers, you could have two USB headsets plugged in and uh, two joystick devices and you can operate them independently.